Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program, and we go brown paper bag today. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about we'll uh, go tomorrow brown paper bag with maybe somebody joining me. We'll see what happens, but we're going brown paper bag today. Chianti, Chianti Classico, Chianti Reserva, Chianti Rafina. I have no idea what Kamer picked. It just is Chianti. Uh, a lot of people drink Chianti out there. I figured let's do another show for them. A bunch of new Chiantis came in that were supposed to be pretty good, so that's how you get a show. Wine number one. I'm gonna see if we can make a tight Curious to see what a tight brown bag show looks like. Maybe a little more realistic to how I actually taste them when brown bag. Let's give us a snippy snip. And again, you know, Chianti can be so much fun. I mean, a lot of varietals can be in there, but obviously Sangiovese, the dominant. And so a lot of times you get that sour cranberry thing going on. This actually has a little more creaminess. It smells a little more New World than I'd like. So right off the bat, I'm like, huh, why is Chianti acting California-like? Let's give it a whirl. And that's number one. You know, cherry juice, kind of simple. Um, little creaminess around it. Nothing that really excites me. Um, a, a little kind of radishy kind of thing going on in the finish, but you know, very basic Chianti. Wine number one is not a big fan. Wine number two. Oh, wine number three. That's right. Nah, it's fine. Wine number three. I think so. Actually, give me another glass, Mott, in case she had an order here of like, for some unknown reason, I don't, I don't want to get yelled at by K. Murph. All right, wine number two. Yeah, I'm looking at the color. It might make sense. Take a look at this. K. Murph, sorry. Oh, I'm taping. Oh boy. But go ahead. Can you email me the video and Lori? Yeah. Cool. Sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um. As you can see, wine number two is a little bit lighter, so wine number three over here. I thought she was coming off. I was like, I got scared. Wine number two. All right. So wine number two, let's give it a little sniffy sniff. Really nice nose, actually. Very, very pretty. Candy-like a little bit as well. Get a little blueberry jam. Smells like, a, actually smells like blueberry pancakes. You know, there's a little bit of that pancake batter going on. A little, little smokiness as well. Um, actually, not true. Not smokiness. More like a dusty kind of element. Let's give it a whirl. More classic, but style. Great, really great length. Good, you know, little like cherry berry kind of thing going on. It's very elegant. A little rustic, a little choppy, you know, that's what you expect. It's not a $50 wine, I'd be surprised. Um, good finish. Light, easy drinking. Would go great with pasta or or pizza. Perfect Wednesday night wine. Perfect. You know, just textbook. And wine number three. So when you're tasting, you know, blind, what's great is you don't have the preconceived notions. You're just kind of tasting along. This is the biggest of the bunch. Color and nose. Very creamy, a little bacon fat coming through, which is nice. Plum-like, which is not what we saw in either of the prior wines. Good. All right. And here's how we have them rated. This is how I have it rated. All in all, Chianti not showing a whole lot on today's uh, show. Um, in general, a little bit disappointing. Uh, I'm, I'm borderline appalled uh, by this last wine. Scored it 80 points, 10 bucks. Thought it was really, really bad. Carpignetto, 2008 Chianti Classico, $13, 90% Sangiovese, 10% Cagnolo. Uh, yeah, it tasted like entry-level Drek, and it kind of executed that way as well. Uh, Carpignetto is a very nice producer, a fan in general, but I didn't like it. I thought it was cheap. I thought it was a $10 wine. It's a $13 wine. It's in that zone. It showed me nothing, and um, I'm not a fan. 
in second place is probably the most expensive wine. It was the biggest for sure. It, it's powerful, it's structured. It reminds me a little bit of like Rufino Gold, except with a little bit more like a Cabernet slang to it. Uh, Californiaized, in my opinion, lost a little of the essence of Tuscany, in my opinion. Tastes like a $25 wine, but I'm still gonna score 86 plus points because it was underwhelming and not inspiring. Though I can see this wine getting a good score from somebody. Just to put in front of this is the uh, Brolio Baron Rocasoli 2007 Chianti Classico. 20 bucks, 90 points wine spectator. Mainly Sangiovese, but with some Cabernet Merlot. And those are some of the varietals made. I mean, this, this I pretty much drilled, in my opinion. Um, that's what I kind of thought was gonna happen. I'm happy that my palate's doing its normal thing. Flat out, thought it was an 86. Thought somebody would give it a good score because it's Californiaized, and that's what happens when you use Cabernet Merlot. And, I think it's a little bit of a mistake for Chianti in general. That's just my personal opinion. It's for another day. And uh, my favorite wine, the one that most executed what I thought Chianti could be like, perfect kind of, you know, weekday wine. I gave it 88 plus points, so Chianti didn't crush it in general. But to me, this is a 16 to $18 wine, 88 plus points, serviceable. I would buy it. I wouldn't run out and buy it. I wouldn't tell you to go and buy it, but I would buy it. If I saw it on a list, Ruby Tuesdays with the guys watching football and you know wings and I need some wine I would buy it. Felsina 2007 Chianti Classico Reserva $22 no score 100% Sangiovese 50 US bones it is a little bit more expensive and a little bit bigger pedigree producer than I thought Felsina is one of the great producers of Chianti Classico and 88 plus points I feel good about I mean I, I, I would say that um they wouldn't be as happy with that. This is a perennial 90-point scored Chianti Classico Reserva. It's, you know, 7 to $8 more than I thought. And so at 22 bucks, it's a hair disappointing in general. Has just left me feeling a little bit slum-slum. Um, but it's a good Chianti. Uh, and I'm really kind of happy how my palate did blind because these were all kind of what I thought they were. Thought it was entry level Drek, it was. Thought it was Californiaized Chianti, and it was. Thought it was more classic and more in my palate, and it was. Um, just thought this would be a little bit less expensive. In general, Chianti, in my opinion, is an overpriced category. And just like this blind tasting showed, I tend to really struggle with the category as a whole. I think there's too much blending of other varietals. I think it's lost a little bit of its sense in place. When they do find it, they probably overprice for it. It's in an awkward place for me. I'm down on Chianti globally, and I was hoping something would change my mind with this episode. That did not happen. Question of the day, what is your Chianti thesis right now? Drinking it, tried it, ever have it? What are your thoughts? Used to love it, hate it now, Rapino Gold in the past, nothing. You know, love it, and I'm not seeing it. Tell me, link me, tell me, tell me. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.